Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics, in at Tackle Tactics HQ. So excuse any forklifts, phones and barking dogs. It's a pretty busy place around here at the moment, getting out lots of new stuff from after. Alrighty, today I'm going to talk to you about rigging and fishing. An extremely popular Z-Man plastic and a plastic that has won a ton of brim tournaments, a stack of bass tournaments, but it's also a plastic that is a favourite among social fishos because it catches so many different species from the fresh water to the salt water. And that is the Z-Man two and a half inch grubs. So a two and a half inch plastic that punches well above its weight and it hasn't just landed brim and bass and flathead, it's also caught big barra, big mulloway, trevally, all sorts of things find this thing irresistible, whether it's a representing a, you know, a little shrimp flicking along or a worm or some other aquatic or terrestrial creature, whatever it is, fish love to eat it. And there's a few reasons why I believe it's so effective. It's Z-Man 10 times tougher Laztec, so the material is extremely durable. But even though it's durable, it is extremely soft and flexible as well, so it feels realistic. So once fish start biting it, they will often keep biting it until they find the hook. So if you're getting a few rattles, just keep it moving, keep it moving, and boom, you'll often get a hook up because that material feels so realistic. It's also durable. So you don't just get that one or two bites and lose your tail and that's it, the fish is gone. If you do get those couple of bites, the fish can keep eating it until it finds the hook. And probably one of the main reasons why it's so effective as well that people don't often think about is the fact that it's buoyant. So when this plastic is on the bottom on a jig head, its tail is sticking up in the air and moving around. So it looks alive and realistic, even when it's at rest on the bottom, that tail floats up and keeps moving around. It also allows us to lightly weight it or even almost surface fish it on a Chinlocks uh, finesse jig head as well. So we can, we can weight this plastic very light and hold it up in the water column, which allows us to skip it in and fish it around pontoons and, and fish it higher in the water column as well because of that buoyancy. It doesn't want to sink naturally. So there you go, there's a few reasons why this little plastic is so deadly. It's caught a bazillion different species. It's a great downsized plastic if you're fishing for a particular species and the bite is tough through winter, you know, and those sorts of things. If the bite gets tough, it's a great downsized plastic as well to switch fish on. You know the old saying, big fish catch big lures, uh, big lures catch big fish, small lures catch all fish. And that is this this particular little plastic. So how do we rig it and how do we fish it? Because it's a curl tail, it's loaded with action. So if you haven't done a lot of soft plastics fishing before, this is a great starting point for you because of the tail action that's built into this plastic. It has loads of tail action on the sink. It has loads of tail action on the retrieve. And even when it's just sitting on the bottom with that water movement, it's also got plenty of tail action. So it doesn't really matter how you retrieve it. You can let it slow sink, it'll get eaten on the slow sink. You can hop it, you can roll it, you can burn and kill it, you can twitch it, all sorts of retrieve. Shake it across the flats and you'll get brim and grunter and all sorts of species eat it. So how do we rig it? I like to rig it on a hidden weight system if I'm fishing canals, fishing pontoons, fishing structure higher in the water column where I want to keep that plastic up out of the water. Because the material is buoyant, and because we rig it on that hidden weight system where basically the weight is concealed inside the plastic, it skip casts really well. So you can skip it up into those shady pockets, skip it up under the gaps in the pontoons and, and beside boat holes and that sort of thing, and just allow it to sink down. Watch your line. If you see any speed up or stop in the line, set that hook because that's probably the lure in a fish's gob. So that's on a hidden weight system. It gives us that slow natural horizontal sink that attracts fish and trigger strikes, and it allows us to keep that plastic up higher in the water column. You think of those pontoons, they're like a reef, but it's upside down. The structure is on the bottom of that pontoon, so we really want that plastic wafting in and around under the bottom of that pontoon for brim and those sorts of species. So hidden weight system, an effective way to present that plastic on a slow, natural, horizontal fall and keep it higher in the water column as well. In terms of standard jig heads, we rig it on the headlocks series of jig heads. So the headlocks has that grub keeper with the gap between the grub keeper and the head and that gap locks that 10 times tough elastic plastic in place on the jig head. So in a headlocks HD which has a heavy duty mustard black nickel chemically sharpened hook we'll fish it in say a 4, a 2 or a 1 size hook with the 1 being common for the fishing that I do but you may want a, a smaller 
hook like a two or a four if you're fishing for say southern black brim and that take is quite finicky you really want them to get it into their mouth so a four two or one in a headlocks hd and that hd hook is brutally strong so you can stop big fish on that little hook so that's a great starting point for those of you that want to fish it on a standard jig head if you're a bit more experienced with your fishing you may want to drop down to the headlocks finesse so that's a fine wire gamma katsu hook so it's a thinner hook which gives you better penetration especially on light line and with light leaders but the trick is if you're a beginner and you're not so sure you're probably better off with the heavier hook whereas once you're a bit more got a bit more feel for it and you're a bit more experienced you might want to drop down to that finer lighter gauge hook because you know a fish swims near that thing and it's just about hooked that fine wire hook is all about penetration whereas that hd hook it's chemically sharpened still so you've got that good balance between penetration but a rock solid hook for fighting big fish as well a couple of other ways we can rig it on a standard jig head the demons jig head so the demons is basically a painted head so it's a painted jig head uh, with a gamakatsu hook in there gamakatsu fine wire hook i was just sliding off the hook a bit there so there we go that's got that headlocks keeper in there as well so it locks it in place it's a gamakatsu hook on there and that's a demon so it's a painted head what that painted head allows you to do it allows you to match the head to your plastic and make it look extremely natural alternatively you can match the the head to the bait fish in the area or maybe you want to throw a bright pink on the he head on there and make it pop so it gives you that con contrast between the head and the plastic so you can use that head to attract fish and trigger strikes as well so that's the demons painted jig head another way that i've been loving fishing it lately is on the ned locks so if you haven't seen the ned locks check out tackletactics.com.au there's lots of info there on fishing the ned rig using the ned locks tt lewis ned locks jig head so basically it's a mushroom style jig head and it really really takes advantage of the buoyancy of that z-man two and a half inch grubs the head is flat on the end and it allows that plastic to stand up beautifully and because of where the toe point is on that when you pull the plastic it doesn't want to glide like a standard jig head it wants to kick up and then kick back down again so i call it fleeing and then defending as it stands back up instantly so that really can trigger strikes on fish when you've got that rapid hinging between it standing up and it fleeing the other thing about it that's really cool is i fish a lot of flats for flathead and brim and those sorts of things and i'm picking sandy pockets in the weed so the sandy pockets i can work them for a lot i can work them a lot more effectively and keep the plastic in those pockets a lot longer because of that rapid hinging so i can give it a quick little hop hop up and then it drops virtually back down straight on the spot so really good for people as well that want to fish tight to structure so that's that's the ned locks jig head comes in a variety of colors so again you might want to go for a natural color or you might want to throw on that bright orange or chartreuse and and really get it to pop you know color wise of these grubs there's a ton of colors so you you can go for you can go for your reaction colors like your fluoros you can go for your more natural colors and this is probably one of the most popular that's that motor oil color but if you're looking for some colors to start with uh, motor oil bloodworm greasy prawn uh, midnight oil bubble gum are some good starting points as well so that grubs is is definitely a deadly plastic and it's available in some really cool colors so if you haven't seen motor motor oil under uv light check out this cutaway because it is awesome under uv light and with fish having uv receptors in their eyes that motor oil just pops in the water and that's what makes it so so deadly it's just been an absolute killer in brim tournaments so that's our ned locks jig head we've got our flat head to get it to stand up very easily and get it to hinge when we fish it so it hinges rapidly between fleeing and then standing up rapidly defending or feeding in the bottom so check out the ned locks on that two and a half inch grubs deadly presentation and that's available in a variety of weights as well with that size two or size one hook as well which is perfect in the grubs finally when i fish the grubs there's also a weedless option so I love my weedless fishing. It's, it's definitely a great way to fish if you fish around any sort of structure. If you really want to get that plastic right, right in where the fish are, it's an awesome way to fish. The trick is when you hook them, you've got to get them out. So that's over to you, then that's your job. So we have a chin locks finesse where you can basically fish that plastic virtually unweighted. You can, you can wiggle it across the surface if you want to for explosive strikes from bass and that sort of thing. Or we can rig it on our snake locks finesse and then we can fish it with that weighted head to fish it a bit deeper. So for me, I fish the flats a lot for brim, flathead, grunter, all those sorts of things. If I'm fishing very, very weedy areas, 
I'll throw out weed just like this. And you know, something like a one twelfth, one eighth, one sixth, but you really want that number four hook. So it's a tiny hook that allows you to fish that small plastic effective weedlessly. And you can also throw it on a number two. Sometimes I fish it on a number two and I just stretch it out a little bit on that number two hook if I want to fish a bit bigger hook for, say, predominantly targeting flathead in the weed and that sort of thing. But that number four fits it absolutely beautiful. It's pulled some awesome brim out of structure and other species out of structure as well. So that's weedless rigging. You can see the plastic sits up and covers up the hook and the barb of the hook, which allows you to run it through that weed and structure. Fish bites it and it clears the hook. And that's where that elastic material has another great advantage with its super soft and flexible feel. It clears the hook much more effectively, so you'd be flat out finding a plastic that is more effective for weedless rigging than those Z-Man 10 times stuff plackies. So there you go. There's a bunch of different ways you can rig that deadly little plastic. It is effective on so many species. If you're not catching on plastics, get yourself some two and a half inch grubs and give it a crack. For me, finally, I sent up. I always sent my plastics, maximise your chances of catching fish. I just smear a little bit on each side of the grubs and I slide it, smear it right down to the tip of the tail. For me, hard to go past mullet or sardine pilchard, but I know that a lot of the brim tournament guys, they fish this twitchy and shaky like a shrimp, twitching and flicking, and that shrimp scent is absolutely deadly on those two and a half inch grubs as well. So there you go. Make sure you check them out at your local Z-Man dealer. You'll also find loads more information about rigging and fishing soft plastics on tackletactics.com.au. All the best with the fishing.